We're playing this game according to Master Jack's rules. Bad form. Sit down now. Let's resume the game. Ah, tell your captain the truth. Oh, say it. Say it. I did. Yes, you made a boo-boo. I did. Mm. I did. The boo box. No, I, no, I the boo box. Yeah. Chris Art and welcome to Tales Wales, the pod that never fails to sex you up, fucking love you, <laughs> shove it up your ass! <laughs> Sorry. That was so aggressive. Sorry. I came so loud to my ear. I'm then. sorry, I'm sorry. Um, maybe I'll try that again. We'll see. We'll see. I like but, it. I like it. Um, Jack just said to me then, because so Jack looks fucking broken today. <laughs> he looks so tired. I have a bit. He's had two big days on it for a birthday mm. bash and a mate's bash. So sending love to our little mate, Josh. Virgin. And, um, virgin, Virgin. He, uh, he he looks so sad and mopey, and he went, "Can you do the intro, please, today?" <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I had was shoved up your ass. That is, yeah, that is a pretty accurate in uh, in impression of what I was coming through as as well. Oh, please, can you please, my lord, please, just looking bastard. fucking sad. But but listen to this now. Oh. Something tells me I might be perking up a little bit. <laughs> uh, I I'm actually on a Asahi today. Mm. On a, uh, I love how uh, the uh, you were texting me the other day, going, "Oh, I've had, I'm too smash. I've had enough now. I'm going off the beers for a little bit." Instantly, I'm, I'm back well, on the Asahi. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm I'm decided I'm gonna. Uh, I'm taking my heart health a bit more seriously because I'm just really worried I'm going to have a heart attack. So I'm um, mm. trying to, I'm going to try and... <laughs> What's better for your heart than the Japanese lager? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear this medicinal values. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, a lifetime of of being a, uh, a, a, a lout, uh, a, you know, um, party Hedonist. boy. Hedonistic lifestyle for 30 years mm. um, is, or however, no, not 30 years. 15 years, maybe. <laughs> no, um, mate, you came, you came out the womb fucking yeah. <laughs> rocking out and yeah. partying. Since what, being 16, Canning 17, um, mm. and just, I think, you know, I want to be a bit more, I want to I want to make it, and I want this pod to continue with two of us on it, <laughs> not not the ghosts of me stood behind you. <laughs> God, how sad would that be? If imagine yeah. you croaked it, and it was yeah. just me drinking lager. Uh, on anyway, what are you going to gonna me? talk about? But, well, what are you been up to? Just hanging out with you, mate. <laughs> Just crying. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to just try and, yeah, you know, um, ease up a little bit. So that changed me a bit it healthier. It sucks, doesn't it, that, like, life isn't geared to, like, why can't I just abuse my body constantly yeah. and just get away with it? Like, why right. must I have consequences to my actions? Yeah, you know, just let me be a fucking laugh forever. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, oh, and, uh, yeah, so, just gonna, so my point was I'm just eased up a little bit, but I'm always going to have a pint. I'm not going to fucking completely stop yeah. having bears. So I'm an Asahi, just a simple Asahi. And we're doing a lunchtime record, so we're not having <laughs> yeah. many. We're, it's a Sunday lunchtime record, so a Sunday beer, is, you know, that's fine. That's within exactly. the doctor's orders, I'm sure. It's, it's the Lord's Day. I mean, why yeah. wouldn't we have a, sun, a, a yeah. Sunday sash, you know? So, I know it's just evolved from one beer to a sash in my mind, but there we yeah. go. <laughs> well, we are meeting up later, so, you know, there is always that possibility. Probably have a pint while yeah. we're there as well. And, <laughs> yeah. Like, if I'm having one now, I'm having one yeah. later, shall I just have some in between as well? Maybe. Um, maybe also, maybe just before we start and get too derailed, I wanted to shout out, there's an event that we really wanted to go to um, in Cardiff uh, called the Taliesin Origins, which is, um, there's a guy on Twitter... Um, uh, or person on Twitter. Um, it's just, I just realised it's not on Twitter. It's on Instagram. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Twitter, not no Instagram, not Twitter. Called Silurian Folk. So S I L U R I A N F O L K. He's got. He's doing like two events. Um, he's had to add an extra date due to the popularity of it. But he's going to cover in uh, Welsh mythology and folklore and stories and stuff from um, yeah around the Taliesin. Um, so, do you know? Do you want to say who the Taliesin is? Uh, so Taliesin, yeah, he was a famous bard or poet um, 
from oh I'm gonna I'll, I'll tell you what I'll guess and I'll see if I'm good at, good enough at my remembering. Mm. Yeah, I think he's fifth century. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> oh yeah, see. But, Let me see. Ah, I was well off. It's eight uh, eighth century. Ah, uh, well, you know, so, not too bad. Three hundred years. What's three hundred years? Give or take. Yeah, um, but but yeah, he was a very famous uh, poet for back from uh, back when Britain was Breton, uh, and lots of stuff we talk about, especially on the mythology episodes. Um, a lot of those old stories sort of come from books yeah. he's read and notes he had down and stuff like that. And so yeah, it's a pretty big deal in Welsh yeah. history. In Cardiff Union, on the Friday the uh, 8th, there's one on the 5th as well, on the 1st, sorry, of December, but on that's been sold out. But on the 8th, there's another event um, where he's going to look through like tales of Welsh witches, druid bards, and all that magical Welshness. Um, and he's got a good account on social, so I said we'd give him a little shout out. So here's that shout out. Uh, we'd love to have gone, oh, yeah. but I think I'm coming back from a Christmas party, so I'd have been a shell of a man. Uh, you wouldn't be in the mood for poetry, yeah. would you? Although my new healthy lifestyle, I might not have. Um, I might have, you know. We'll see, mate. We'll see if it sticks now. Put more Asahis down you. I think it'll all change. Yeah. Um, uh, do you want to... Heart we... be damned. Yeah, well, that's just, oh God, I don't want to die. <laughs> Someone message me saying I won't die. <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> this this is um this podcast has been like a chronology of my mental health deteriorating every week. It's like I shout out to the <laughs> yeah. listeners and say, please tell me something else. Uh, I, I like to think anyone who's been listening since day dot, maybe on the first episode, you're like, I'm feeling great today. You know, I'm feeling like I've got the heart of a 20 year old. And then, like, by this one, you're like, I'm dying. I'm a death dog. I'm going to stop with the Japanese lagers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I'm sure we'll be all right. Maybe I'm just having a bit of an existential crisis as a, oh, as a leader. Be fine, mate. Yeah. Maybe forget it. <laughs> Have a beer. Take the edge off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, in, in back to true fashion, um, let me just get this up so I can do it uh, justice. Um, because people, you know, we, we mentioned before, I'm a bit of a prankster, you know, a bit of a jerker. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> I do enjoy a little, uh, uh, I, I sent, I've sent a message, like, what always works with a good prank is, like, trying to, you throw your net out to see who's going to nibble. And um, I threw a message out to a bunch of the boys saying, um, do you wash your legs in the shower? And then um... I knew I fucking knew that it was a prank because <laughs> yeah. anytime you you have a fucking weird question like that, I'm like, what's this for now? Yeah. And you know, I know it's leading to something. Luckily, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't you give you the no, right chomp. You didn't did give I, me so... the right chomp. So yeah, I asked a bunch of the boys, "Do you actively?" No, I said, "Do you wash your legs in the shower?" And then um, before they replied, I'd quickly edit it. So um, one of the boys, Josh, Josh, Josh said, no, I don't wash my legs in the shower. Oh, no, no. He said, so I said, do you wash your legs in the shower? And he went, no, question mark. And I edited it saying, do you actively wash your penis and armpits in the shower? <laughs> yeah. And then, so he looked like a little grub. And then I sent that to all the boys saying, oh, this is so weird. Josh doesn't do this. But if anything, oh. it makes me look weirder that I'm asking someone, do you wash your dick in the shower? Yeah. <laughs> because the, the screenshot you sent was completely normal conversation and you just go do you watch your dick in the shower or what you know, it's, it was such a strange sequence of messages it wasn't anyway. one of my most uh, uh, well thought out or high, high yeah, um, usually there's, a, there's like planning goes into those doesn't it but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, as soon as I saw that screenshot as well I was like oh I see that's what he was trying to do to me but because I'm not a grub and I do wash my legs you, you're like, yeah. oh, I can't do that can't yeah. use that one um, do you want to hit us? I'm getting a bit of a, a flying through these today because uh, we got things to do later on. Do you want to go straight mm. in with your the, the review? Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a pretty short review. This is from Jones the Pilot. Uh, he? And he says, Mint, five stars. <laughs> quality banter, hiding quality stories and facts. Keep it up, boys. So thank you, Jonesy. Mint is quite an old school uh, seal of approval, isn't it? It's for, in mint. Just makes me think of Minty from um, EastEnders. <laughs> from that character. Yeah, of course I know Minty. Madden. He's what I aspire he to be. He doesn't know Minty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the most affable, fun person there is. Um, who was his, like, who was his, like, you know, there was the ant to his deck? What was yeah, his there name? was two of them. The they? they were like bands, Minty Eastenders. Let's have a yeah. look. And they um, were like the lovable mechanics yeah. or something, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Oh they didn't have God. any too serious, they didn't have too serious a storyline no. ever, did they? They were all joking and laughing about all, well, while the world was falling apart <laughs> around them on Albert it, Square. I think that was it, Gary Hobbs, was it? Gary, yeah, uh, uh, I think it was Minty and Gary. Uh, yeah, but he looks like the nicest guy. 
Uh, yeah, Gary, yeah. <laughs> and then Heather Trot, the old Trotter. Oh God, yeah. that's one of those cruel names the you've given. Yeah, you've given Heather Trot <laughs> yeah. that name for a reason. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. What's the word? What does it mean when it, a word sounds like what it is? Yeah, you know? it's a very self. Heather, yeah, Heather Trot yeah. was very. It was a self-describing. It's, it's sort kind of, of name, like though, like it? what Dickens would do, wouldn't it? He'd give his name, his mm. kind of characters names that like Bill Sykes, you know that kind of thing, where they they match. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're getting way late here. We haven't got time <laughs> for do. our minty banter. Um, <laughs> yeah, save that yeah, for in real life yeah. later on. I mean, hey, yeah. I know they're quite mean about Heather's weight, and they often imply that she's always hungry. Talking of hungry, today we've oh. got a we're discussing um, a Hungarian poet that um, dares to breathe uh, scorn. Oh no, he doesn't. He's not mean about us, is he? Well, I don't no, know. No, he's nice to us. Yeah. Okay. Well, he, <laughs> yeah, he, I, yeah, I love that. He's not nice to us, is he? Oh, I haven't read it. Don't matter. I just assume <laughs> everyone's anti us. <laughs> like, oh, fuck these yeah. guys. But Jack is going to be walking us through and talking us through. Um, a little Hungarian poet who turned his wry eye on Welsh. No, I have no idea what he did. So I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, what did he do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's my word, and you're introducing it with absolutely zero facts. Back, <laughs> like yeah. it could be uh, he's not Hungarian. He's not a poet. He's you know it could be anything. But um, yes, today I'm going to be chirping in your ear about a poem called "The Bards of Wales." Um, and as you may know, Wales is known for its poetry, but this is actually not from a Welsh poet, as Frank's is spoiled already, but it's a Hungarian guy named Janos Arany. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but it's with a J, not an I. But yeah, I'm assuming it's Janos Arany, not Janos. I don't know. But old Janos or Janos wrote this ode to the uh, to the Welsh back in 1857. Uh, when he and a bunch of other Hungarian poets uh, were asked to write praising poetry for the visiting emperor Franz Joseph at the time. He was emperor of Austria, king of Hungary, and the ruler of Habsburg. And I was thinking, that's a lot of fucking job titles, isn't it? That's like, just just have it all in one empire or something. You don't have to keep fucking triple name dropping yourself. Um, but instead of uh, doing this praising poetry to Franz Joseph, old Jonas decided to fuck it off and just write a little ballad about what he alleged was a story rooted in Welsh history. So to quote Jonas's preface to the poem, he said, historians doubt it, but it strongly stands in legend that Edward I of England sent 500 Welsh bards to the stake after his victory over the Welsh to prevent them from rousing the country and destroying the English rule by telling of the glorious past of their nation. We've so I'll come back before. to that. <clears throat> yes, so I, I was going to do a little bit about that. Um, I'll come back to exactly what Jonas was on about there. But just to give the listeners context oh, and also to uh, bulk out my uh, my notes a bit yeah. so it's not so quick, um, I'll give a little bit of history on what exactly what a bard was and sort of why bards in Wales were so sort of unique. So uh, a bard uh, derived from the Celtic word bar, barf, which is still the Welsh word for a poet um, to this day, was used to describe a professional storyteller, verse maker, music composer, oral historian, and even sometimes a genealogist, which I didn't actually know. So monarchs, lords, and chieftains back in Celtic times, they would employ bards to um, commemorate one or more of the patron's ancestors and to praise the patron's own activities. Bards had their equivalents all over the world at the time, um, and depending on where you were, they'd go by Diff- different names. So, for example, uh, you had a skalds yeah. in Norse. Yeah. So Vikings had skalds, which were like bards. Um, rap- rapsodes uh, were Greek, and Europe had minstrels and things like that. You know, they're all the um, they're all the, essentially the same. Different words for the same job title. Um, and if you paid your bard well back in the day, they'd compose elegies of how great you were or all the good stuff you'd done. Um, but if you nickel and dimed them and you treated them poorly. Um, they'd write satire about you. So making fun of how shit you were, quipping about your rule, you know, spreading around town that you were a fucking nonce or something. <laughs> Maybe not quite as uh, vicious as that. But yeah, it was uh, so it was in your best interest to, you know, pay the bards well and treat them well. If you were high in, if you were a bard of high enough renown back then as well, you could actually make um some really good money because lords, highborns, kings even, they wouldn't want you travelling around the land giving them bad press. So it was a uh, it was quite a, a um a high station if you were a good bard. Um, but yeah, back to what um, Jonas was on about. 
and you mentioned earlier, we have talked about this before, that there is actually a fair bit of history on about Welsh bards being sort of silenced, censored and threatened, even killed, um, usually for spreading stories of like Welsh victories, but more specifically when they'd spread the goss on like how the English had been particular bastards. So for example, yeah. when they supposedly lured Llewellyn Ap Griffith to negotiations under a truce, had him killed at the Battle of Orowen Bridge, bards were forbidden to talk about this because it quite rightly painted Edward the first as a bit of a, a snake and like a, you know, using subterfuge, not like it's not very noble, you know, uh, it's not like a, a valiant victory. Is it yeah. doing it like sly like that? But he wasn't killed. So by that, suppo- though, was he? he was killed in. Well, eh, it depends on where you look at it. it yeah. There's, I know we covered or Ar- 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 bridge and the version we covered, uh, he's killed on the way back, coming back yeah. from the negotiations. Yeah. But lots of people maintain that he was killed at the, uh, the meeting, you know, they were going to talk yeah. terms or whatever, and they got killed there. So, um, yeah, that's the sort of example of where they would try and silence bards because they didn't want it coming out that they were like snaky, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, supposedly the bards of the time felt duty bound to share the story um, as best they could. So they actually started singing and versing in code. They did that a lot as well, where if they were outright banned t- uh, on talking on a certain subject, they'd like use you know, their creativity and make sort of symbolism and things like that. And they talk about it in sort of a roundabout way. But uh, bards were so important, actually, that Hoel Var, who you might remember from a previous episode, um, held them in such high regard, he actually wrote them into his laws, um, saying that a bard was to be treated as if he was a member of the king's household. So they were held in quite high esteem back in the day. Um, sadly, the royal form of bard tradition ended when Edward I conquered Wales. Uh, and ended the line of Welsh princes in 1283. Um, so for clarity, Llewellyn Ap Griffith died in 1282, but his, but his brother David carried on the fight for a, a, a small spell until he was killed in 1283, and that's what ended the rebellion, lead to Wales officially being conquered by uh, Big Bad Ed I. Um, despite the official tradition being lost in Wales, though, um, to this day, uh, we've clung to our bardic roots in Wales, and every year at the Eisteddfod, bards are cheered for their efforts. Um, for those who don't know, being cheered is essentially like winning a medal. Um, but you get an actual cheer if you're like one of the best in the biz. So anyway, back to the poem by um, Janos Arany. He picked this subject apparently at the time as a subtle way of having a dig at his own ruling class at the time. Um, and apparently they were quite um, like a hands-on government. They overstepped a lot in terms of censorship and like tight control over the populace and stuff. So this was kind of like a a roundabout way of criticizing that at the time. Um, And so to give the illusion I'm actually trying in this episode, I'm not just going to read out the poem. Um, I'm going to go through it like a bit of a story, bit by bit, and then I'll say the poem section that corresponds to it after, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, If that sounds a bit shit, I've got nothing else in the bag. So, you know, I'm just just going to have to... yourself. You're such a state today. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I, I just don't have the self confidence today to be to, to to do it, but I'm sure it'll be lovely. All right. So anyway, uh, the story starts. And it's focused on uh, Eddie Longshanks, Edward the uh, First, on a trip through Wales to see how his rules going. So this is um, set not long after his victory against Llewellyn Ap Griffith and David Ap Griffith. Uh, so 1283, just after he sort of conquered Wales, he's having a look around and he's seeing how productive the Welsh are being for him. Uh, and if they're basically being good work- workhorses for him, essentially. So already Janos is like portraying him as a bit of a dick. Uh, he winds up ending the day at Montgomery Castle, which is in Paris, where he continues to be a right royal prick, wondering why no lowly Welsh lords are happy to see him. He demands then that a bard be brought forth to sing of his deeds and heap some praise on him. And Janos described these events as such. So I'll just give you the first bit of the, the poem now. Edward the king, the English king, bestrides his tawny steed, for I will see if Wales, he said he, accepts my rule indeed. Our stream and mountain fair to see, our meadow grass is good. Do cornlands bear a crop more rare since washed with rebels' blood? And are the wretched people there, whose insolence I broke, as happy as the oxen are beneath the driver's yoke? In truth this Wales, sire, is a gem, the fairest in your crown, the stream and field rich harvest yield, and fair and dale and down. And all the wretched people there are calm as man could crave, their hovels stand throughout the land as silent as the grave. Edward the king, the English king, bestrides his tawny steed, a silence deep his subjects keep, and Wales is mute indeed. 
The castle named Montgomery ends the day's journeying. The castle lord Montgomery must entertain the king. Then game and fish in every dish that lures the taste and sight, a hundred hurrying servants bear to please the appetite. With all of worth the isle brings forth in dainty drink and food, and all the wines of foreign vines beyond this distant flood. You lords, you lords, will none consent his glass with mine to ring? What, each one fails, you dogs of Wales, to toast the English king? Mm-hmm. Though game and fish in every dish that lures the taste and sight, your hand supplies, your mood defies my person with a slight. You rascal lords, you dogs of Wales, will none for Edward cheer to serve my needs and chant my deeds, then let a bard appear. So from here, in comes a bard. He starts singing about Ed, Edward I, but he's an absolute legend and he's being proper sarky about his um about the king and delves eventually into outright calling him out for like the, the horrible shit he's done in Wales. The king has him seized because he wants some ass kicking not to be taken to task about what a shit he was. Um, and another bard is called in. He gets right into it, wastes no time, and just starts slagging off Edward, basically to his face, but like nice in a rhymy way like a bard would do. <laughs> he gets <laughs> he gets seized uh, under Edward I's orders before he can go too far into it. Edward demands a third bard step forward and start, you know, uh, praising him more. A third brave bard steps in and absolute, goes absolute ham on Edward, enraging the king for the last time. Edward at this point is what some Welsh folk would call uh, tamping, fuming, raging. Tamping. So basically just fucked off. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so he's really pissed off and he orders English riders to ride the length and breadth of Wales, find any bard we could and burn them at the stake, mm-hmm. decrying that anyone that slagged him off from then on was also to be silenced and punished. So Janos's take on this in his poem is as follows. The nobles gaze in fierce amaze, their cheeks grow deadly pale, not fear but rage their looks engage, they blanch but do not quail. All voices cease in soundless peace, all breathe in silent pain, then at the door a harper whore comes in with grave disdain. Lo, here I stand at your command to chant your deeds, O king, and weapons clash and halberds crash, responsive to his string. Harsh weapons clash and halberds crash, and sunset sees us bleed. The crow and wolf are dead in gulf. This, Edward, is your deed. A thousand lie beneath the sky. They rot beneath the sun. And we who live shall not forgive this deed that your hand hath done. Now let him perish. I must have the monarch's voices hard. Your softest songs and not your wrongs. In steps a boyish bard. The breeze is soft at eve. That oft from Milford Haven moans. It whispers maidens stifled cries. It breathes of widows groans. You maidens bear no captive babes. You mothers rear them not. The fierce king nods, the lad is seized and hurried from the spot. Unbidden then among the men, there comes a dauntless third. With speech of fire, he tunes his lyre and bitter is his word. Our bravest died to slake your pride, proud Edward, hear my lays. No Welsh bards live who will ever give your name a song of praise. Our harps with dead men's memories weep, Welsh bards to you will sing. One changeless verse, our blackest curse, to blast your soul, O king. No more enough, cries out the king, in rage his orders break. Seek through these vales all bards of Wales, and burn them at the stake. His men ride forth to south and north, they ride to west and east. Thus ends in grim Montgomery the celebrated feast. Edward the king, the English king, spurs on his tawny steed. Across the skies red flames arise, as if Wales burned indeed. In martyr ship, with song on lip, five hundred Welsh bards died. Not one was moved to say he loved this tyrant and his pride. Odds blood, what song this night resounds upon our London streets. The mayor shall feel my irate heel if all that sounds repeats. Each voice is hushed through silent lanes, to silent homes they creep. Now dies the hound that makes a sound, the sick king cannot sleep. Ha, bring me fife and drum and horn, and let the trumpets blare. In ceaseless hum, their curses come, I see their dead eyes glare. But high above all drum and fife... Ah, for fuck's sake... (laughs) That's not part of it. <laughs> ha, bring me fife and drum and horn and let the trumpet blare. In ceaseless hum, the curses come. I see their dead eyes glare. But high above all drum and fife and trumpets shrill debate, 500 martyred voices chant the hymn of deathless hate. And that's it. That's the, the Bards of Wales by uh, Janos Arany. Yeah. Just basically. I think it's good to give us the explanation beforehand. Uh, I thought that was a very good move. So, uh, yeah. 
I, I'd like to say that I read the poem and like analysed it, you know, to, to get into the shell. But I actually just read an analysis of it because yeah. some of it is kind of hard to follow. If I'm so honest, so I'm assuming Maybe it was because done I'm in... not bardically inclined. <laughs> it was. I assume it was done in Hungarian and then. Um... Translated. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I, I can't speak Hungarian, and I'm translating. I yeah. just got the English so, version. Someone's yeah. got the vibe and turned it into because they do that with Welsh poems. Don't yeah, they? they get the gist and then they uh, get it in. So yeah, because it's the same with like you say with Welsh poems. Sometimes when they're translated, if you translate it word for word, it doesn't keep up like the cadence and the um, the rhyme, does it? So you kind of gotta understand mm. what the poem's about and then rewrite it, which is, I'm assuming what's happened here, which is why everything rhymes and whatever. So what did you say this happened in the 1800s? He wrote this in the 1800s, yeah, but it was about um, the conquest of Wales in, uh, was it 1283? Yeah. Or just after they conquered Wales, anyway. So, yeah, and also, so there's that one theory that he got killed. But I think in ours, um, we said that he gets, he's on the way home and he gets attacked and they, they chop his head off, don't they? Yeah. Um, and so there is yeah. no definitive one, but th- for this guy, he thinks. Um, but in general, even if it, that was what happened, they're not, they still did quell bards after... Um, Edward the first took over, didn't they? Yeah, so they, they he stopped the what was the royal tradition of like the the bardic colleges, if you yeah. like, when because it was such an honoured um, sort of profession. He yeah. stopped that happening. Um, so after that, there was no official uh, bards in Wales. After that, of course, that you have them, um, you know, here, there, and everywhere. But they, um, yeah, the official line of bards, if you like, was stopped then. But you know, it's it's, it's like I said today. There's still what we would consider bards or bards in Welsh yeah. uh, in the Eisteddfod and things like that. And today bards means more poet, I'd say than yeah. what it used to back then, which was like, you know, kind of a, almost like a, an aid to royalty or like an, a noble house or something where they keep an eye on. Like I, I, I thought it was quite interesting. They were genealogists as well. So they keep track of like the house, and uh, the, the yeah. Lord's name, like going I didn't through, want to like, ask what a genealogist was, but that makes, <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot yeah, of so sense. They like keep, you know, they know who's of Royal, descent to royal blood or whatever but yeah, yeah the uh it, i thought it was interesting and it was a uh, i like that it, i like things that rhyme it's nice and i so. <laughs> love a good rhyme <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well that's our link to the hungarians um mm. uh, i think we got another episode coming up but it's also got another hungarian link doesn't it somewhere yeah uh if i'm not mistaken yeah. Hugh, Hugh uh, Shovka or something like that. It's like a it's a Welsh town in in Hungary or something. Yeah, like that, I think similar to like Patagonia, but we'll we'll delve into that once we learn about it. Yeah. But this year was a suggested episode from someone on Reddit, wasn't it? Someone on Reddit mm. um, kindly suggested that we look into uh, this poem and some other things to do with it. So the only thing I know about Wales is we play them in football quite a lot, and um, it's they're quite contested games. They're always quite quite tasty. So um, spirited, yeah. yeah. Um, well, thanks so much, Dave. <laughs> you little hungover yeah. bastard. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It might not come across to the listeners, but that was really hard for me to do because I'm <laughs> fucking dying today. Yeah. So, well, yeah, this, appreciate this episode, that, guys. There's a lot of oh for fuck's sake, oh fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, we're letting mean? it out, but yeah, Frank has yeah. been on the uh, <laughs> receiving end of fucking off stupid fucking thing. Don't work <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, should we get people to go on our socials, uh, which is Tales for Wheels podcast on Facebook or Instagram? Um, yeah, and we don't tend to do much with uh, Twitter anymore. It just, just can't be asked. But we are on there for Tales for Wales, uh, the number four. Um, if you could leave a review, that'd be really helpful because uh, all the reviews help push us up the little ratings and gets more people listening. And if you could share it with your mates, yeah. we'd love that. Yeah, even if you don't want to do a review and you just want to leave a comment yeah. or stuff like that, you know, we love interacting with you guys. So yeah, just yeah, comment on the yeah. Instagram, comment on the Spotify stuff. It's it's all gravy. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Ta-ra, 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 ta-ra. Bye. 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 Bye.